Yeah, this one, this one would probably make me mad. My, my cruise is going to be delayed. I'm probably going to miss a flight so the cruise ship can take a picture. <laughs> we also have a cruise company offering month long cruise passes and there's some new restrictive rules coming out that may have a big impact on a lot of cruisers. Uh, that plus a whole lot more cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lida Loga. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on a Thursday, Thursday the 7th, the 7th of March, 2024. And I come to you with a full heart. Man, I saw Bob Dylan last night and I could talk to you about it for a half an hour and I know not everybody wants to hear about it. Let me just say it was a very fulfilling Dare I say, shout out Tommy Casabona, always be booked. Uh, dare I say, almost a spiritual experience. Um, yeah, that, again, I could, I don't know where to talk about it at. Maybe on one of the live shows, but it was, it was amazing. But uh, what is amazing is some of these cruise news stories today. Cruise news story number one, listen to this. Silver Seas, they are bringing the Silver Nova. They're just finishing up a 71-day cruise. And as they make their way to Florida, they're supposed to arrive on March the 15th. Originally, they were supposed to arrive in Fort Lauderdale 7 a.m., well, now they're going to be delayed four hours so that the Silver Seas ship can stop and meet up with the world's largest cruise ship, the Icon of the Seas, and Celebrity's newest cruise ship, the Celebrity Ascent. They're going to meet up there in the water so that they can take a photograph. Yeah, it's like the line's newest cruise, all in the Royal Caribbean family, the newest cruise ship for Royal Caribbean International, the newest cruise ship for Silver Sea, the newest cruise ship for Celebrity. They're going to have themselves a photo op, which sounds all hunky-dory. However, uh, if you're somebody that's been on a 71-day cruise and you're planning on flying out of Fort Lauderdale, maybe at 11 or 12 in the morning, which is reasonable, if your cruise gets in at 7 a.m., 11, 12, 1 p.m. flight, not that unreasonable. Now, if the ship's not going to let you off until 11 a.m., um, yeah, you, you could be in trouble. Now, you know, for Silver Seas Part, they have notified people with a lot of advance notice. They are going to give some money if need be for change of travel plans. If you booked your flights through Silver Sea, they're going to do all that on the back end themselves. Uh, I, I could see that being annoying. I think it's going to be cool. I can't wait to see the picture. But uh, could you imagine if you were, would you be upset? I guess that's the question. I, I would get over it. I mean, there's worse things in the world than having four more hours on a luxury cruise ship. But, uh, you know, maybe after 71 days, you're like, I just want to get off here and fly home and, you know, feed my dog or something. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Would you be upset? Leave a comment below. Okay, a quick interlude for an embarrassing story. When I was 19 years old, working all the time at Burger King, I thought I had it going on until a female coworker of mine uh, straight up told me that I, I smelled bad, that, that I stank. And, you know, it could have been the Burger King. It could have been 19-year-old hormones. It could have been poor hygiene. But, the, you know, after that conversation, I got with it. I got very hygienic, and I started my relationship with fragrance. But the challenge with fragrance at that time for me, just as a guy working at Burger King, is, well, it's the same problem a lot of people have today. A lot of selections, and a lot of the good selections are expensive. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you try new designer fragrances for just $17 a month. Scentbird carries your designer brands, Prada, Gucci, Versace. They also have independent brands, Skylar, Heretic, Confessions of a Rebel. Scentbird is a great option for those that want to sample a lot of different fragrances, but also a great option for travelers because every month you get a 30-day supply of your fragrance in 
in a small travel size dispenser. This month, like a perfect synergistic gift from heaven, they sent me two kind of nautical related uh, scents. First up, we've got the Tommy Bahamas Maritime Triumph. It's got notes of mandarin and violet leaves and pimento. They tell you all that on the card. The other one that I felt was a little cruise related is Rojas Apex. And it's so easy to apply, just a little spritz and boom, you are good to go. Now, if you want to try Scentbird for yourself, you can do it for less than $17 a month for your first month. You can do it for like $7. Make sure you use my code 55 Loca to get 55% off your first month. Or even easier, just scan the QR code there. It'll take you right to the web page. Big thank you, Scentbird, for making me smell better uh, so I don't have to have that conversation again and for sponsoring today's video. Cruise News story number two, and this is one of those stories that I'm really excited about. I know not everybody will be really excited about, but I really think it's a story that demonstrates the promise of the disruptedness that I felt like Virgin Voyages would bring to the cruising space, to the cruise industry. Really cool announcement coming out from Virgin Voyages that they will be offering a one month cruise pass where for $9,990, Two people can get a Central Sea Terrace cabin. Central Sea Terrace, I think Terrace means there's, it's a balcony. You can get one of these cabins for four weeks at sea on the Scarlet Lady. And the Scarlet Lady's currently cruising over in the Mediterranean. They're offering one month passes for June, July, August, and September. It's a 30% savings on what it would cost to normally do a month worth of cruising. But the thing that makes it disruptive and exciting to me is it's being pitched as a work from sea endeavor. Included in that price, they're giving you the premium Wi-Fi. They just partnered with a company called SES. They also have Starlink on board and those two offerings they're touting as going to be the fastest internet at sea. And I really do love this quote from Sir Richard Branson. I've been fortunate enough to be able to do my work from anywhere. When I started Virgin, I was actually working out of a houseboat. I never thought of work and play as two different things. It's all just living. We want to give sailors the same opportunity, so we came up with the idea to have them travel the world while working aboard our beautiful ships, though this sounds like a lot more fun than my houseboat. To me, this is the dream realized. Uh, look, I know, you know, I, I've lived that life for 30 years where I would go to an office somewhere and do the thing and have to be a part of that corporate culture. And uh, I tell you what, I was nothing more satisfying than being able to break free from that for me. And I'm one of those people that are happy to combine my work and leisure into the same activity. And uh, sometimes that's a challenge challenge on cruise ships. So look, Virgin Voyages, not for everybody. You know, they're still new in the space, but innovative opportunities like this, certainly it's going to be good for the company. Let's not get it twisted. They're still trying to make money, but I love the fact that they're trying to twist the cruise culture in a way that not only is it going to be good for them, but making new opportunities for people that are looking for interesting opportunities for work and play. I would jump all over that. Less than $10,000 for two people for four weeks of cruising, including premium Wi-Fi. Does this kind of move excite you or is this something that makes you like make this face? I know there's people out there that are like, I don't want any kind of work to be commingled with my cruising. I don't like it. I come cruising to, to not do it. One thing about the Bob Dylan concert last night is they took your phone. And so I don't know the last time that I was without my phone for like three hours. And it was amazing. We watched the show. No, no cameras anywhere. No lights anywhere. It was just, it was just us and the troubadour and the, the ugh. Uh, it was cool. So I do respect the fact that it's nice to be able to have that disconnection between your technology and your vacationing and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, maybe a week at a time, that's wonderful. But if you really want to you know, like live on a cruise ship, you got to do work. At least I would. I'm not retired. So uh, what, do, what do you think? Leave a comment below. Cruise news story number three. I just want to mention it. Today's the day that they are voting in New York City to determine whether or not they are going to put new restrictions on cruise ships using the cruise terminals there, the Manhattan cruise terminal, the Brooklyn cruise terminal. Some of the things in 
included in this new bill that would put restrictions on cruise ships. Cruise ships have to be able to hook up to shore power. The Brooklyn Cruise Terminal has shore power, but I don't think they have the universal plug-in like the MSC Maravilla cruises out of there. MSC Maravilla can handle shore power, but apparently they don't have the right plugs. And so MSC saying, hey, we'd love to use it, but you got to fix the infrastructure. Uh, you know, so New York's saying, look, all cruise ships need to turn off their diesel engines, connect to shore power. They're also talking about cruise lines need to come up with a mitigation strategy for the increased traffic that they bring into New York City, like, you know, road traffic. I think this will pass. It's going to be interesting to see what the vote is today. I think this will pass and it'll be interesting to see if these laws actually go into place. But today's the day. Today's the day they're voting in New York City. So, um, Oh, yeah, there's that. Cruise news story number four. Are you a gambler? Would you like a free cruise on one of the newest cruise ships in the world, the Sun Princess? Well, there is a company that would like a casino review of uh, the new largest casino in the Princess fleet. I think like 277 slot machines and 13 table games. The website casino.org is giving away all expense paid trip on board the Sun Princess. This is going to be an $8,000 luxury package, which is going to give you a cabin. It's gonna give you $500 to spend in the casino. It's gonna give you $500 on board credit. And the only thing that you're required to do is review the casino for casino.org. Uh, it's open to everybody who is 21 years of age and older. It's open to people in the USA, in the UK, and in Canada. Uh, you also have to have a passport. Anybody that's interested, this competition is going to run from March the 1st, 2024 to April the 30th, 2024. If you're someone from the UK, you need to have availability for the Sun Princess between June and September of this year. And if you're living in the United States and Canada, you need to have availability in October and November. It's like a great way to get a free cruise. I didn't pop over to see what, what they're looking for. I'd love to hear it if you go sign up for this thing. What, what are they looking for? Uh, leave a comment below. Now I got to tell you about what I feel like could be some fairly challenging new cruise restrictions that may knock some people out of cruising. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Thank you in advance. Okay, here's the deal. If you've been on a cruise lately, you know that not only are there people on board who have no trouble with their mobility, walking around, climbing steps, living their lives, playing basketball, everything like that, but then there are also people on board cruise ships that need assistance when it comes to mobility and scooters are a big part of the cruising population. And I guess as scooters have become more pervasive, there have been some scooter challenges on cruise ships. We've got new rules coming out from Carnival Cruise Line saying very simply, if your scooter does not fit in your cruise cabin, you cannot bring that scooter on board. I've seen some, I've seen some small scooters. I've seen some big scooters on board. Carnival is saying, look, no longer is there going to be scooters in the corridors outside of cabins while people aren't using them because it's not safe. And so now they're going to be mobilizing people on embarkation day to go look at your scooter, match it up to the cabin that you have booked. And if your scooter will not fit through the door of that cabin, or if you cannot store it in that cabin, then they're going to tell you you cannot board the cruise ship. That That's major rager. Now, secondarily, they are going to have a service there that will rent you a scooter that will fit in the cruise cabin. So a little bit of a business opportunity, but also a little bit of convenience for the cruise passenger that may not be able to get their big scooter in the cruise cabin. But um, look, I've been on cruises where there's scooters in the hall. I do get the whole like, you know, corridors on cruise ships, not that wide anyways. And so if you've got a scooter out there blocking up effectively half of the corridor, it could be a challenge. It could be a challenge for where, you know, people bring in the carts to do room service and, you know, clean uh, all of that stuff. So I get it, uh, but it does seem like a little bit of a new challenge that people that may already have challenges because of mobility, a new challenge for them to overcome. What do you think out there? Is this something that will impact you? Do you think that this is a good change, a bad change? Uh, leave a comment below. Boom, that is your cruise news. Another big thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring today's episode. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Thank you so much for watching. If you could hit that like button on the way out, it's Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, We'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>